there's obviously a genetic component to the way we age and there's a lifestyle component as well. And, you know, I, I've seen numbers anywhere between 40 to 60% is genetics and the other anywhere again, you know, you've got 50, 50 to 60% is, is lifestyle. It, it's a scale, you know, in terms of the difference between maximum lifespan, average lifespan and health span, they're all interesting. And maximum lifespan refers to the oldest age you can live to be. And we know at least for humans, they can live to be around 121, right? That's, that's I think, the oldest recorded, you know, life lifespan for a human. We know that, you know, in, in the United States, it, the, the median or the average lifespan differs from country to country. And that could be a combination of gen different genetic makeups, you know, different ethnicities. There's different single nucleotide polymorphisms that are common within a certain ethnicity. And there's also different lifestyles and cultures and, you know, many different factors within different, you know, regions of the world as well. But we know in the United States, our, our average lifespan for a female is around 82 to 83. And for a male, I think it's something, something like four to five years shorter than that um, in the United States. In, in Japan, for example, the average lifespan is about five years. The life expectancy is about five years longer than in the United States. And there was a really interesting paper from Bill Harris, Dr. Bill Harris, who's one of the amazing, he is just a, a, a rock star in the omega-3 fatty acid field. He's been studying it for decades and decades. I mean, he was like, you know, right after the Dyersburg, um, one of the, the famous papers that came out looking at the Inuit population, the Eskimo Inuits, mm -hmm. and how they have like very little heart disease. Well. He did this study looking at the, what's called the omega-3 index, which is a biomarker of both the marine omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA, in red blood cells. And the reason he does it in red blood cells is because it's a long-term omega-3 biomarker versus, I would say, the majority of any type of omega-3 test that you were going to do or ask your doctor, your healthcare you know, professional to, to run for you, it would be in... It would be plasma phospholipids, and, and that's a very short, it's a very, it, it very much reflects your what I ate last night or what I ate two days ago kind of thing. Whereas red blood cells, you're talking about the last 28 days. And so um, it's a much more accurate biomarker of someone's, someone's omega-3 status. So the omega-3 index, which Dr. Harris uh, co-founded along with um, uh, another scientist who I can't remember his name, unfortunately, but he found that in the United States, the omega people that had an omega-3 index of about four percent um had the lowest average lifespan versus people in the united states that have had the um, their omega-3 index about eight percent they had a five-year increase in life expect expectancy compared to the group with the low, low omega-3 index and what's interesting is that in japan so in, in the united states the average omega-3 index is about 4%, 5, 5%. So people don't eat enough. They're not getting enough of the omega-3 fatty acids and particularly the ones from fish. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in Japan where they eat a lot of seafood, they have an omega-3 index of a, it's the average of around 10, 10%. And again, their life expectancy is, is you know, five years higher than, you know, in the United States. So there are obviously factors in our lifestyle that affect um, the way we age, that affect disease risk, and certainly uh, health span, which as Dr. Fahey referred to, you know, really is talking about extending the youthful part of your life, keeping you disease free when you're older, not necessarily making you live, you know, longer, just improving the quality of your life because you're not going to get Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease or have type 2 diabetes earlier in your life, which really decreases the quality of your life. I think the qual the quality of your life can, there's just no doubt, there's no doubt that that lifestyle plays a huge role in that. Now, whether or not you're going to make yourself live, you know, to be, a, you know, 100 years old, based on your lifestyle factors, I, I, I'm not sure. I think there's a, also a large genetic component as well in that. And I think that, that fi identifying biomarkers that can you know, obviously empirically be measured are, are key for, for um, 
looking at health span and we're, we're, I think there's a variety of biomarkers that are now coming out that are being vetted as that. And I, I honestly think the omega-3 index is one. I do. I think it's a, it's a, it's one of the, the important ones. Um, and it certainly reflects lifestyle, uh, diet and, but there's others. I mean, there's inflammatory biomarkers and there's, you can measure stress related ones as well. Um, and, and certainly, you know, things that are stress related also inf affect inflammation. And so there's a lot of crosstalk there as well. Mm -hmm. But um, there was a there was a study that came out of Japan, this was in 2015, where um, they looked, there was a, a variety of different age groups, there was elderly people that were in their 80s, there were the, the centenarians that were 100, there were the semi super centenarians that were about 105. And then there were super centenarians that are 110. And there was a panel of biomarkers measured we're talking like 12 to 18 and you know, we're everything from HbA1c, which is a long-term marker of blood glucose levels. You're measuring, you know, the, the standard lipid panels, looking at LDL and just all the normal stuff, liver enzymes, things like that, that you would do in just your, your routine physical. But they were also looking at a, a variety of inflammatory biomarkers. They were looking at telomere length. They're looking at immunosenescence, which refers to your immune cells, not being able to be functional, although they're still there, they're just not really functional. So there's a variety of things that were looked at. And the only thing that was actually consistent to for a person to advance to the next stage, centenarian, semi super centenarian and super centenarian was the suppression of inflammation. And um, so lower inflammatory biomarkers, and they did a whole panel, not just high sensitivity C reactive protein, which is like, I would say a common one that's used in in clinical practice, but it's not the only one. I think there's a there's a panel of them if you're trying to be comprehensive that were looked at. So I thought that was very interesting because, um, you know, you often think of like, well, telomere length, and that wasn't actually important to advance to each each uh, stage in terms of what can be done with diet and lifestyle to improve biomarkers to improve, you know, what we what we think might improve health span. And I think that there's a lot of research that suggests that there are things that can be done and they can be measured. And um, so, but we also have people that are, you know, following it and they're going and using companies like Wellness FX, which I don't have any affiliation with, but like you can go and order a variety of blood plant panels and they have really good ones. They have, you know, panels of inflammatory biomarkers and that you can measure. That's not just high sensitivity C-reactive protein, you know, so they have, um, you have people that are also, really interested in preventative, you know, healthcare and in optimizing their, their diet and their lifestyle based on science. And so they're trying to learn themselves and, and they also communicate with their physicians and work together. And so I think there's a, a variety of different um, ways that people are trying to uh, improve their lives and the lives of their family members and friends.